Hi everyone, in this video I'm wanting to show you some little tips on how to make sure that you are getting the sharpest image you can possibly get. In this video I'm actually shooting some jewellery uh, for a company in Edinburgh and uh, they want me to get stock shots of all of their jewellery, all their necklaces, their rings and all that kind of stuff. And I'm really working trying out how to figure to make sure that the black stays totally black and white backgrounds are totally white but yet not overexposing on jewellery itself. So I'm doing a, there might be another video coming up soon where I've learned some little tricks and tips of how to do that. But anyway, this is more about making sure you've got the sharpest images possible. So if I'm shooting in here, there's two things I want to do. First of all, fast enough shutter speed and a low enough ISO. If you have a high ISO and your camera starts putting in noise reduction, you start getting softer images. If you have a slow shutter speed and even if you're holding it, there's always going to be a tiny little bit of vibration. So first of all, get your shutter speed up to 250th of a second and use some flash. If you're doing stock photography, you want to control the lighting. You also want to make sure you've only got one color of light coming in, so the flash. Meanwhile, the light from the windows and from these horrible lights that are in here don't affect the image. So if I were to take a shot just now at 250th of a second, F4 with the flash off, then it will come up a totally black image, as you can see there. So that's exactly what one. So the only thing that is exposing this is the flash. So the flash is always very, very fast light as well. So that helps freeze any movement. The next thing is I'm using a macro lens. This is the Nikon 105mm f2.8. And all macro lenses are incredibly sharp lenses. But they're also got such a shallow depth of field because you can get very close to something. And even if you are at f18 or 16 or whatever, and you're this close, you've still got a tiny depth of field, so the back and front could still be out of focus. So you're probably wanting to take this camera up to its like top aperture, like f32 or something like that. And the aperture will change the closer you get as well. The closer you are, the smaller the aperture is because of you've got this kind of extension thing that happens as it goes in and out. So that's me getting closer and closer and closer. And that changes the effect of aperture coming in. It's, it's a bit of confusing mathematics. But anyway, so now that I've got the shutter speed and now that I've got my flash on, definitely going to make sure the flash is bouncing rather than going directly straight at it. Because if I shoot straight at the jewellery, I'll get the horrible reflections coming straight back off the, the black velvet and it will just look crap. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll show you that just now. So straight off. Duh! God, that looks horrible. Warzone. And bouncing it off the ceiling, this is what it looks like. Well, it's kind of a sloping ceiling that I've got, and that looks much more the kind of look that I'm wanting to get, as you can see uh, right there. Now, first thing to do is get the camera on a tripod. Okay, so nothing too extreme here, just got the camera set up on the tripod. Now, I'm shooting with the D700, the 105mm lens, and a flash on top. So that's a lot of weight. So you want to make sure that the legs of your tripod are very well spaced out and that you've got a good tripod that's not going to fall over. So for example, with this one, that back leg goes in all the time. So if I were to touch that, it would totally fall over. So you've got to be very careful whenever you're putting this much weight on top of your tripod, pointing at something down there. Okay, so now that we've got the camera on the tripod, that's all good. However, if we are still using the shutter button, there's still a little bit of vibration happening. Every time you're holding the camera, although you may not see it, you're still slightly uh, causing a little bit of shake. And whenever you push it down, you're causing movement, definitely. Um, so, you can do something about that. You can buy one of these little things, which is a kind of off-camera trigger button. Uh, this one, I think it cost me about £12. I got it from Calumet. Um, and this bit is universal, but the bit that attaches to your actual camera, this bit here, is uh, the bit which you need to get individual for each camera and that goes in a little socket there. So if I want to take a photo now, I just go click like that and that takes the photo. Brilliant! So that's good. So that means I'm not causing any vibration with my hands and I'm not touching the camera. But there's another thing that can potentially cause vibration or shakiness and make your images a little bit soft. And that is whenever you take a photo, what's happening there is a load of things. One is the shutter is coming up and if you Google any kind of slow motion shutter things, you'll see it goes whoo, boom, and then all of a sudden the, the bits in front of the actual sensor then lift up, uh, open and close, your, your sinking bit. 
and uh, there's a lot of movement there. So what you want to do is be able to in make the shutter or the, the mirror move up before the shutter moves. And there's a setting on this where you can get that. I'll show you that here. Okay, so on the back of your camera, if you click menu button, you've got a whole bunch of different things. This is where you've got the little kind of uh, thing above there. If you go into shooting and display, go along to that, then you've got a whole bunch of options here. And what you need to do is you need to go down, 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 exposure delay mode. Click on that, turn that on. And that's how you do it. So now, when I press the shutter, listen to this, and then it takes the photo. So you'll hear the first bit, that is the mirror bouncing up the way, and then once the vibrations of that have calmed down, it then opens the shutter, and that's when it takes the photo. So listen again. So there's a little kind of like two second delay. It's not even two seconds, like one and a half seconds delay. And that is the best way so that you're not touching your camera, your camera's on a stable ground, you are setting off the trigger uh, remotely, and you can do it with a remote as well, that works absolutely fine. Um, and you've got a delay from when the shutter bounces up to when the, uh, from when the mirror bounces up to when the shutter opens and closes. And that is probably, I would say, the best way to make sure that your images are as sharp as possible without worry about shaky vibration or anything like that. The next question is, can you get some good photos from it? That's what I'm working on. Okay, hope that helps. Cheers, bye-bye.